good morning from me and Ziggy. It's Monday morning walk time and uh, I'm going to try have another go at doing this little forest chat thing. And uh, come on Ziggy, up the hill, come on. And the thing that, the question that kind of appeared the most surprisingly to me was people want to know a little bit about my history and my journey as a guitar player. And on the weekend I tried to do one of these little videos but ended up rambling for ages and then realising I'd forgotten loads of stuff and I think it was just pretty boring really. So what I thought I'd do is try and break it into some little chunks and tell some stories along the way about things that I learned, people I met and that kind of thing. So uh, I've been playing guitar since I can remember. My earliest memories are playing guitar but I don't have a great memory. I'm, I'm not sure probably misbehaving in my teenage years might have kerfuddled my memory a bit I'm not sure but uh, yeah I don't remember real clearly so a lot of it's kind of based on photos and stuff like that um, I had a ukulele at a really young age but I don't think I actually played it I just held it and kind of danced around a bit um, but my guitar journey began with recorder in primary school so in uh, grade five going into grade six which I think is 10 or 11 years old uh, if you got really good at recorder you were allowed to learn to play guitar and uh, so I spent a Christmas holiday break going through the entire recorder book learning to read music and play all the tunes so when I got back to school I could play the whole book on recorder um, they were super impressed the teachers at school and I was allowed to join the guitar club and I got given a nice school nylon string guitar. I can't remember much about it at all. Um, but I, I know I loved it. And uh, I think halfway through the year, my nan had bought me a acoustic guitar, uh, a Yamaha CG100, I think it was. Um, I remember really struggling with things like bar chords uh, in fact, well, no, actually, not even bar chords. I remember struggling with G chord, and I used to go, Mum had some songbooks around a Beatles songbook and stuff, and I used to go through and try and learn all of the, the songs that didn't have a G chord. You know, it was like a simplified Beatles book. It wasn't the Beatles complete. Um, at that early age, I really loved the Rolling Stones and Status Quo, uh, with Australian stuff like Cold Chisel and the angels and that kind of, you know. And in fact, I'm trying to think, cold chisel at that age? It's difficult, like I said, my recollection is a bit sketchy. I, de I definitely remember having rolled gold, the Rolling Stones album, and the Status Quo album where they're all wearing double, uh, double denims on the front. Um, yeah, so I, there was a couple of interesting things that happened in that really early period, which turned out to be really valuable. One was, me asking my dad to buy me some more sheet music books and him saying that I should just learn it off the records. And dad's not a musician, though he can play entertainer on the piano. Um, but that was really, really great advice because it just meant that I wasn't scared of transcribing or working stuff out myself. So really from the very first t period of playing guitar, I was trying to work out songs on my own off the records, invariably getting them completely wrong. But I was trying to, and this was, you know, vinyl records and, you know, I remember trying to put my finger on the on the edge of the record to slow it down to try and figure out how things were done, but that changes the pitch and it was pretty complicated. But I was a little kid, so it was just a an adventure really, and it was a lot of fun. I do kind of vaguely remember um, watching other kids playing sport in the park opposite my house and thinking, you know, I'm cool with this because I'm really enjoying playing guitar. Um, about halfway through that year, so I was about 11 I guess, I got uh, an electric guitar. I was doing a Sunday morning paper round thing where I'd knock on people's doors and sell them the local paper. And uh, I saved up some money and we bought, uh, my dad paid the other half and we bought my first electric guitar which is an Aria Pro 2 Stagecaster and a Gorilla Amplifier. Awful amplifier, not a bad guitar, um, but it did. and. Uh, Around that time as well, I, my parents kind of thought, you know, he's getting really into this. So they got me some private lessons, guitar lessons. Um, I think the first, the first teacher actually at primary school, I should give him a shout out, was a guy called Greg Cracknell. Uh, great singer and guitar player, but he didn't really play 
much more than what we were sh being shown in the books. And I had a, a little moment where I thought that if I spent the whole Christmas holidays or one of the holidays uh, practicing and learning all of the stuff in the guitar book that we were given, which was all stuff like Kumbaya and what should we do with the drunken sailor and that kind of stuff, it wasn't fun music. Uh, but if I learned it all, that I'd be better than the teacher. So I'd, you know, I'd, I'd spent a, uh, this whole holidays really going at it and learning all my chords and stuff. And when I got back to school, uh, they were obviously super impressed that I'd learned all of this stuff. So I started getting kind of extra stuff to work on. And, and I think that's probably where guitar started to become a bit of a thing. Cause if you start to excel at something and people give you more stuff, you kind of still getting better all the time. And so that was kind of, you know, a, a lucky adventure in, in trying to be clever and, and trying to be better was that very early period of, of you know, learning the book extra, you know, and, and having a, a school holidays where I just really did nothing but play guitar, apparently. Um, so around the time I got electric guitar, I started having some private lessons as well. Uh, great teacher uh, was at Southern Music in Elizabeth Street in, in Hobart, Tasmania, with a guy called Pete Thompson. Um, I bumped into Pete a few years ago when I was in Tassie and said hello. He's, I think he's doing a lot of fishing these days. Uh, really nice guy and he taught me a lot of great stuff. The minor pentatonic scale, he taught me about playing a chunka chunka 12 bar blues. In fact, it's him who taught it to me as a, a chunka chunka 12 bar blues, that, you know, the classic blues shuffle thing, you know, and that's why I still call it. Um, so he did, he taught me a lot of really good things. Chords in the key stuff, you know, which helped a lot for transcribing, which I was still doing a lot of, you know, working out songs on my own. Um, I started a little band with a, a drummer called Luke and another, I think it was just me and him for a while. We had another guitar player. I think his name was Cozzy. Uh, but me and Luke did our first gig together. When I was 12, we played at my grade six end of school formal before we went to high school, you know, the dance thing. I can't remember how many songs we played. It can't have been many. I don't think I knew that many songs. Almost certainly would have involved like Johnny Be Good and, um, I'm just trying to think what else was in that book. Oh, Surfing USA, I think was in there. Possibly Wipeout. Uh, a few other of those kind of surfy, bluesy sort of tunes. That's mostly what I had learned at that stage, I think. Um, and yeah, so that was my first gig, which was a pretty exciting thing. And I remember really enjoying the, you know, playing and everyone standing around and dancing. And, you know, that, that was a really important kind of moment, I guess, in the whole because I felt like I'd achieved something. I'd learnt this thing and other people liked listening to it and that was a pretty big deal. And I was, I guess even at that early stage, I was pretty committed to that that was, you know, guitar was what I was going to do for the rest of my days, I guess. Um, and yeah, so that was, that was primary school. Uh, don't, can't remember much else about playing guitar in that era. I was, I had a few songbooks, like I said, I, mum had a Beatles songbook, purple cover, can't remember what songs were in it. And we had this school book. Might have been some other sheet music books around the house. Uh, neither of my parents are really musicians. I think my mum played clarinet a bit and dad played a bit of piano and we had a piano in the house. I did have piano lessons actually when I was very young. Uh, but that woman, I still remember her name, Mrs. Vasilewski. And she used to hit us on the back of the hand with a ruler if we played wrong notes on the piano. And so I used to hate going and I think that's just really crappy teaching. And uh, you know, she shouldn't be teaching. <laughs> or shouldn't, uh, she's, I don't think she'd probably still be alive even because she was pretty elderly when she was teaching me. But that was, yeah, that's really poor uh, stuff. But anyway, so I didn't stick at piano much. I play a little bit of piano now because I took it as a second instrument at the conservatorium, which we'll get to later on down the track I guess so when I got to high school um, I was still playing a lot of guitar I joined a band I think when I was in grade 7 so when I was 12 or 13 I joined a band with some older guys one of them still a dear friend Nathan Sproul who played drums but I can't remember who else was in the band which I'm really you know I, I, sh I should totally remember and we, we were doing a few more gigs and we used to rehearse all the time at Nathan's house all of the other guys in the band were a lot older than me. They were all in grade 10, so they were 16 years old. And uh, so that was a bit of an eye-opener when you're 
12 or whatever and, and seeing and hanging out with guys that are that much older because they're you know drinking and smoking and you know chasing girls around and that was all like really opened my eyes up to the whole thing especially at gigs and sit, having you know all of that sort of stuff around at gigs it was pretty interesting and cool um so yeah we were i can't remember we were definitely at that point i was playing more stuff like dire straits definitely more rolling stones i think more pop music of the day as well but i don't remember exactly what and i do remember that nathan introduced me to a lot of like 80s rock stuff so um you know la guns and i can't remember if guns and roses were happening at that point yet or whether that was further down the way um i also got introduced to i'm just trying to think of all of the other stuff because I, I also played in another band um come siggy this way we're not going to go and chase the runners today come siggy siggy come on i played in another band uh with a couple of local dudes anthony and david and uh i think there was another guitar player called john who explained open tuning to me which was a bit of a revelation and i learned a lot from those guys as well we, we played a lot of stuff like the pretenders and um just trying to think what else it was probably just more status quo acdc definitely by that point i was getting into um and those guys were great they really introduced me to a lot of awesome music proper rock and roll roast tattoo the angels all of that sort of stuff um and so that was a that was a pretty big deal i think playing with them we did some gigs as well um and okay so this is still high school i'm just trying to think what I, what gear i was playing at some point i got a pv classic 212 amplifier 212 inch speaker thing with some chorus in it um pretty not very good amplifier but you know it was a much much bigger step up from my um from that little gorilla thing that i had pre prior to that um i think i i also got a multi-effects box of boss me5 and uh i had as well an old boss the gray boss chorus pedal which i remember swapping for ziggy come down from there um which i remember i swapped for an arian delay pedal probably before i had the multi effects um which i just looking back on it now was such a bad move but we didn't know at the time and digital effects were all the rage and new sounding and all of that and i think i should there was another guitar teacher i had for a very little short time called uh, brian rice I remember he sold me my first effects pedal, which was a Boss Flanger. Um, I think he was just offloading it to me, to be honest, because there was no need. I didn't really know what a flanger did, or, and I had no reason to, to need one. What are you doing, Six? What's that? It's a squirrel. Come on, Six. Come on. Um, so high school. What else was going on in high school? In high school, I didn't get into classroom music because it was just really boring. We had a music teacher who just wanted to teach us you know classical stuff and i wasn't even slightly interested in any of that i think her name was mrs Cragg. can't remember the head of music teacher teacher's name he gave me the cane though i remember that and that was pretty horrible back in the days when teachers were still allowed to hit kids um but i had a great guitar teacher actually in high school called phil lawler um and he had one of the great you know one of the biggest revelations for me that sparked off a adventure in the music theory land which was uh, he taught me the major scale and around that time I think in one of the bands I was playing in I was we were playing fade to black and I worked out the solo that intro solo do 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 that one and at the exactly the same time Phil had taught me the uh, pattern five of the what now I know is pattern five of the major scale and um, I correlated that the solo and the notes in that scale were exactly the same thing and that was a really mega moment for me now we've just encountered another dog so i'm gonna to have to stop for a second because it's embarrassing talking to a stick sorry the whole point of these walks in the woods is really for ziggy to meet other dogs so it seems rude to um, not let her do so hey, come on ziggy come on a lot of people were talking about why i'm not letting her off the lead and the reason is is because she can run really fast and she doesn't have great recall yet she's only four months old and uh especially in the woods here if she sees a dog very far away like a kilometer away she'll just bolt and then i have to run charging across the forest trying to catch up with her and that's a bit you know i don't like that she was good for a little while and then she's just i'm not sure if she's reached dog adolescence or whatever but she, she just literally will charge off very far away so anyway back to revelations in high school uh, high school, I'd learned all about bar chords and stuff, I think from Phil. 
Law Love. I think I might have still been having some private lessons as well at, uh, at Southern Music. I can't exactly remember, to be honest. Um, but uh, I was playing a lot of guitar. I was really, really into it. Um, I was also really obsessed with punk rock as well, which is a little bit of a weird thing. Um, I was really, really into, into the Sex Pistols. I had a mohawk for a little while. I must have been, a, at that age, I must have been a horrible kid. I mean, I really feel sorry for my parents around that age. I just wasn't very nice. I used to play music really loud in my room and had a proper rebellious face, you know, which I don't think is such a bad thing for a teenager, but I really did it properly. Loads of earrings. I think I had a nose ring for a little while. Uh, I used to wear a padlock and chain around my neck like Sid Vicious and, you know, I started drinking a lot and I was, I was just a horrible little kid, frankly. I, I really, I forever feel bad that my parents had to put up with my behaviour in those, in the years in high school because it just, just wasn't very cool really. I, I, I kind of, well, I can't regret anything like that because it is what it is, but, you know, I do think that that wasn't the, the right way to behave. It looks like we've made another doggy. But I don't think this doggy's particularly keen on meeting puppies. It's a big German Shepherd. So I guess we'll we'll see. Come on, Ziggs. What's that, Ziggy? Is that a lion? <laughs> Is that a lion, Ziggy? Hey? Look at that. You're getting on strike, are you? Hey? Who's that? Is that a big lion? Oh, what's gonna happen here? She's quite small, he she. Four months, Four yeah. Months. Oh no, she's not even the lion's not even interested. So I can't think about more exciting things that happened in in high school musically for me. I mean, I was working really hard. Come on, Ziggs, up the hill, come on. I mean, working really hard makes it sound like it's hard work, but of course it's playing guitar, which is not hard work. It's amazing fun and it's, you know, it was just something that I really enjoyed doing. So I guess it's not like, when you find something like that early on, things are, generally easy because there was never really a question about what I was going to do. I think uh, I think I remember getting accepted to art school because for some reason I thought I might go to art school rather than the classical conservatoire after college but you know generally I just knew that guitar was the thing that I really enjoyed doing and so I just did it all the time and I think that's one of those key things about if you're going to you know, excel at something if you find it young and you're really into it and you do it without, especially without having parents pushing you or whatever, because my parents never pushed me to practice, they encouraged me. I think dad didn't think it was something I should make a career of, but he still encouraged me to practice and, you know, my nan always really encouraged it. She was really into organ. She played organ all the time on, you know, Sunday lunch or whatever. She had this big two-tier organ with drums and stuff built into it probably pretty expensive for its time can't remember much about it but I do remember you know hitting the rock and roll button and it having this you know these amazing drums that I could pl practice guitar along with that was pretty cool I remember fondly some days doing that don't think shit Nam was as impressed with electric guitar and rock and roll music that I liked but always encouraging and I think that's pretty important so where things I guess got pretty exciting for me was college um, when I got hit college so I was 16 years old I'd had a lot of gigging experience I could transcribe really well um, I kind of knew a bit about music theory stuff but not really I just I knew about chords in keys and stuff like that but I didn't know how to construct a major scale or I don't think I really knew my scales very well at all. I couldn't read music. And when I got to college, I had a really super inspiring music teacher called Alan Cato, who, as well as saving my ass from getting expelled for jousting on rubbish bins, um, he taught me a lot of amazing stuff about music. He taught all of the stuff that they had to teach at school, but he explained stuff in a way that made sense. You know, talked about the you know, he, he gave examples of real world music and yeah, just a really inspiring dude, generally. And I was also lucky, I guess, that at school, there were loads of other people who played guitar and music. Um, there was a guy called Ziggy, who I remember really well, uh, which is funny because my dog's called Ziggy. Um, I don't know what happened to Ziggy, actually. No, I, can't, I don't even know what Ziggy's real name was, which is 
crazy, but he taught me about stuff like finger tapping. He was a, he had really long hair and in fact, most of us had long hair. I had really long hair in that period as well. Um, and yeah, so being around a whole bunch of musicians that were into that 80s rock thing, that was definitely the period where it was all about Guns N' Roses and LA Guns and Faster Pussycat and uh, you know, that whole LA glam scene. And I remember troopsing around in leather pants and a ripped top and my long hair and drawn on tattoos and it was pretty funny. It must have looked really ridiculous. Uh, I was in a band called Smash Alley. I'm trying to remember, it was Jason on guitar and Merton on bass, Ruben on drums, who was a fantastic drummer. He died recently in a really sad accident living in Sydney and I think it was a canoe based accident, but uh, I'm not sure of all the details, but. He was an amazing artist, that guy. Anyway, so we had a band and uh, we used to do gigs in rock clubs. And I remember dad dropping me off one night and coming in and just seeing this carnage of loads of underage kids really drunk and, you know, everyone having long hair. And he, I think he was pretty appalled by the whole thing. But, you know, that's what, was, what, what it was about at that age, in that era. You know, that was important. It's important for me to learn that and I, I learned stacks of it, you know, transcribing all of those songs and, you know, stuff like Guns N' Roses and LA Guns, all those riffs. It was really good. It was good for learning about playing in a band because a lot of them had two guitar parts and so dividing the workload up of that and, you know, we partied pretty hard as well, which I guess again is just, you know, I wouldn't encourage it in a, if, you know, if my daughter said, hey, I'm 15, I want to drink a bottle of JD, I'd, you know, I wouldn't think that would be a good idea, but, you know, again, of that era, that was kind of what was going on. Everyone wanted to be in that glam scene. It was very, very sexist and very misogynistic and all of that, you know, but yeah, that's what it was, I guess. Um, just trying to think again, what else? At college, uh, trying to think teachers, James Dobell taught me a lot of stuff. And I guess actually, there were some important parts at that, at college, which was, um, I learned about things, as well as harmony and theory, my eyes got opened up to other stuff like um, jazz, particularly. James really pushed me into a lot of jazz stuff, he taught me some walking bass ideas. Um, there, there was another student at the school called Aaron who could play all of that stuff and was a lot more learned than me in that. So he was really encouraging about learning stuff like, you know, walking bass lines, particularly this book by Barry Galebraith. Um, which I can't remember what the whole book's called, but it's all uh, walking baseline studies. Now, Ziggy, you can't go and play with the runners. Come on in. Um, come on, Ziggy, come on. Um, and at college, I, I, I discovered, I think it was first of all, I discovered Joe Satriani, and that was a huge turning point because I'd never heard anything like that. And then I heard Steve Vai and got into that hole because I'd already listened to the 90s rock thing. I probably actually I might have got into it via David Lee Roth thinking about it. Van Halen to David Lee Roth to Steve Vai to Joe Satriani. I can't remember. Or maybe it was that I'd heard that Joe Satriani was Kirk Hammett's teacher and I love Metallica as well. That early band that I, the, I mentioned, the Smash Alley played a lot of that sort of stuff. Metallica and a bit of Slayer and kind of quite heavy things as well as the LA sleaze scene material. Um, but learning about yeah, learning Joe Satriani songs was a big deal because it meant that I had to get my technique together better and you know I had to learn about finger tapping and you know big stretchy chords and all of that sort of stuff so at the same time I was learning some jazz walking bass and jazz solos chord melody classical guitar because I had to do a certain amount of classical guitar for passing college so that was you know and I was playing a lot like we just played all the time you know at lunchtime we were all you know outside playing guitar in the winter we'd be inside playing guitar there was a music room which had amplifiers in it, so we'd all be sitting there for, you know, playing all the time, playing in bands, rehearsing. It was just like a non-stop gigging thing, which was mega, you know, really, that was a, a pretty awesome little time. Um, and so, I'm trying to think what else happened in, in college. Oh, Valhalla. So I joined another band, must have been later in college, called Valhalla with Darren and Mick and Craig and David. 
and we did our first recording sessions. So we had a single out that was played on the radio. I think it was called Rock and Roll Baby Doll, if I remember right, what a, what a title. Um, and we won the, I think we won a Battle of the Bands thing, or did we get second? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, we were, we were serious about it. We were into it. We had, you know, merch and logos and, and all of that sort of stuff. We were, you know, super keen on it. Um, really trying to like get a record deal or whatever which seems funny now looking back on it because it wasn't even a record label in Tasmania but you know that kind of that was what we were aspiring to and that was my first experience of being in the studio recording to tape it was in a in the local radio station they gave us like a weekend to use their studio I'll have to try and dig out the um, dig out the recordings for that I remember I think at that stage I was playing a Jackson guitar where that came from, I'm, I can't really remember, or how I encountered it. Um, and I definitely, I'd upgraded the amp to this PV head and, and 412 combo. I can't remember what it was called. It was a valve amp though, and it sounded pretty good, if I remember. Um, yeah, and that band, we played loads of stuff like Queen and lots of ACDC again, and The Angels, and we were gigging a lot more regularly, uh, bigger clubs. Um, and I think that went through what into when I started at university as well. So it wasn't just high uh, college that was going into my university years. If I've got my dates right, but I need to, I probably should have checked before I started filming this video about my dates, <laughs> really. But I can't remember exactly the chronology. I have to look it up one day. Um, but that was a great band as well. They were all really great musicians. Um, Michael, the other guitar player, Michael Adkins, incredible guitar player. He, he does that ACDC thing so bang on, fantastic at all the, the bending. He's got the vibrato just down, and I was always super jealous of his ability to play guitar. You know, technically really good and nice lines. And yeah, he was kind of lead guitar player. I was more the rhythm guitar player in that band. But I was into, I guess I could do a bit more of the technical stuff. So, you know, Satriani legato line sort of thing and finger tapping which it wasn't really his bag but man he, he could play proper but again they were a lot older than me i was probably 17 16 or 17 in fact i got my driver's license in that band and i remember driving to rehearsals with with darren and uh like uh, trying to figure out the how the, how the tape deck worked in the car which was kind of funny come on ziggy come on so uh I think if there's any other stuff that was going on at college because I guess where it, where it really got serious for me was when I went to university because my dad said I had to go to university there was no question that I was going to a university it was just what what I was going to do and what I was going to study and we only had one university in my town and that was a classical guitar well classical conservatoire so I could go and study classical guitar and that's what I did but I think that'll have to be a story for another time because I'm coming near toward the end of my dog walk and my GoPro is running out of memory on the SD card and the battery's getting low. So um, I hope this has been interesting and it's kind of what you guys were asking about when you said about my, I to know a bit about my background and my journey. If it's not, I apologize. If you've got this far through, I'm assuming you found it interesting. Um, come on, come on, come on, let's go. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll try and do another one from from the end of college uh, onwards. Um, I should actually, you know what I haven't mentioned, which is ridiculous because it's kind of important, I suppose, being that I'm known as being a guitar teacher, is that I started teaching when I was really, really young. So uh, I think I was 12 or 13 and I started doing lessons out of my room. and. I used to charge like a dollar or something, hardly any money, and I used to use that money to buy books and lessons for myself. Um, and by the time I was at college, I was already teaching at this place, a, a private lesson school, which is, it was called the Hobart College of Music, run by a great musician called Jason Patmore. Sadly died a couple of years ago in a motorcycle accident. Really nice guy. Um, and uh, I used to just sit in a room basically after college few nights a week and, and teach people and make money that was really combined with doing gigs and doing the teaching I, I was making a pretty comfortable living even when I was 17 um, probably not enough to have lived on my own I still lived at home but um, yeah it was pretty I had a lot more money than other kids my age which was pretty cool although most of it got spunked on new gear probably um, 
so yeah that was I was teaching a lot and I'm, and I'm sure again that's the reason I mentioned an important part of the journey is I think that when you teach something you have to have really understood the, the basic blocks of it to be able to show it to someone else so I'd be very sure that one of the reasons I digested so much stuff so quickly was that I'd started teaching when I was really young so I, I was every time I learned something new myself I was trying to break it down into its component chunks to be able to explain it to someone else and that's exactly what um, I, I guess I still do it every time I'm learning something for myself I'm I'm trying to figure out what the pieces are that that make up this thing and uh, and not necessarily so I can explain it to someone else but so I can understand it myself definitely um, and yeah that's so that's I think as far as my career goes because I guess I'm I'm more of a teacher now than I am a player which is feels a little bit sad to admit but it's true I there was a I think the period for me was much later that I, that I went from being a guitar player into more of a teacher or, or songwriter really I guess first um, but that's for later down the way when I after I've been to the Guitar Institute that all all of that sort of stuff happened the discovery of Neil Young and all of that which for some reason I'd managed to not ever know much about um, but anyway there you go there's there's my life guitar life up until 16 years old which I guess is the most formative part and the the part that made the biggest difference as far as making a career out of it because you know in those days you don't have a mortgage or kids or any commitments like that and I was able to absolutely give it everything and I wanted to you know I definitely you know I don't want to force my daughter to play guitar I try and encourage her every second to to, to pick it up and noodle around on it but I, I, I don't want to force her into doing it like you hear about tennis coaches or whatever forcing their kids to be playing forever even if they became a world champion I just don't think it's the the right thing I want to you know I want Vivi to find what her passion is and and stick with it rather than trying to force it I don't know I guess there's a there's a debate to be had on that as well so uh I'm trying to think of anything else related to my guitar journey up until the age of 16 that made a big impact I think if there were any other bands that I was in or anything like there probably there's probably some gaping holes in stuff that I've completely forgotten to mention um, anyway I think that will do for now um, yeah my battery lights flicking now so um, hope that was interesting uh, uh, comments or suggestions uh, down in the comments about other things I've already found a couple of uh, I've got a couple of interviews with people because I thought that would be an interesting one so uh, based on some of the comments from the previous video um, the first little you know is this a good idea video um, uh, I've invited a couple of people to come for a walk in the woods with me with the dog and we'll just have a chat about some things like session guitar and uh, I've got a couple of older students who have gone from um, not playing guitar to, to working musicians which I figured some of you have been saying you know am I too old to learn is it too late to start gigging so I figured it would be make an interesting conversation with them so there's a few interesting things and uh, probably next week or something I'll, depending on the weather I'll uh, try and take us from 16 to some other period depending on how long I ramble for. I'll see you very soon. Bye bye.